I suppose the Joseph Hantry Charitable Trust has been involved in Northern Ireland since the 1970s, very, very shortly after the Troubles began. And our motivation was very clear, and it was about the conflict in Northern Ireland. And we are a, a, a foundation which has as one of our aims thinking about peace and conflict resolution. And we've had to adapt our strategies as the political situations changed. Um, but we've done a, a number of different things. In the early days when the, there was no chance of, of developing a political solution, uh, we invested a lot in the community development section. And I think as Avila Kilmurray has said at the lecture tonight, um, the importance of the community sector as keeping the, the, the candle of democracy alive, allowing a way for people to keep engaged in their communities. And at that time as well, particularly the women's organisations that played such a real, uh, a real role in, in, in cross-community connections. And then as the, uh, the, the decades developed, I suppose, in the 1980s we were very influential in funding the very first of the integrated schools, Lagan College, and out of that school and its success came the idea of trying to do more in the integrated schools and that was where the Nuffield Foundation came in. Uh, Anthony Tomey was very very influential in trying to build a coalition that was to get the Integrated Education Fund uh, established which was able then to take the whole development from one school to a whole sector of schools and we supported the Nuffield Foundation and were involved in that work it was very much led by the Nuffield Foundation. So the collaboration there was quite important. The other area that we did in the 1980s in particular was around human rights. And I think in any conflict human rights are really important. And so we helped establish the very first human rights organisation in Northern Ireland, the Committee on the Administration of Justice. Um, and that then managed to attract funding from a, a, a wide range of foundations as well. Um, and of course now, in particularly Atlantic Philanthropies, has uh, taken up the, the, the mantle of uh, thinking about human rights work in a big way. And then as the political process changed, we started to try and find ways of, of thinking about how to take the political agenda forward. And I suppose we started in the early 1990s in a, in a very a very um, um, uh, depressing time when um, some of the political talks broke down and people came to us and said could we organize a community um, commission a community-based commission so that the people of Northern Ireland could actually have a say about how um, the, the, the what the future might be for them and so the Upsal Commission was launched and it came up with uh, a number of recommendations, one of which, and it was the first report in which it was suggested that Sinn Féin, which was the political party of the Republican movement, should in fact be brought into the peace process. And so that was a very important step as well and as that decade moved on, we tried to find other ways in which we could support the peace process. For UK foundations that have a UK brief cannot ignore Northern Ireland um, and I think um, at sometimes that has been the case that Northern Ireland hasn't been ignored at other times and particularly after the peace kind of process matured a little there's been a danger that uh, foundations have, have let go of, of, their, of their commitment to be here and I think that is really quite dangerous because even though the violence is over to some extent and I really do believe that uh, we're in a different place altogether in terms of the violence, um, the peace process is still goes on and it's going to be a long time before we can say that we have got real peace in Northern Ireland.